Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And in this video, I want to answer the question, how many pixels should I run from each port on my pixel controller? When it comes to the hobby of Christmas lighting, uh, there are a number of topics that can definitely divide people uh, between different camps. And this is one of them. Um, on one hand, there are people who say, hey, run, you know, maximum, I don't know, 150 pixels, 300 from a port. Don't do any more than that. There's other people who say, hey, depending on your controller, and this depends a decent bit on your controller, you may be able to run a thousand pixels or more off of a single port of the controller. So why not use everything you've got on that controller to get it done? Okay. There's a lot of schools of thought here that go into this, and I want to talk through for you how to think through this so that you can make the very best Christmas light show possible. Okay. At the end of the day, there's no one blanket answer that covers everybody's situation and everybody's needs. Ultimately, whether you use the full amount of pixels your controller can do or not, the decision comes down to of the seesaw, really weighing out the seesaw of um, complexity of setup and potential reliability versus um, the getting the most bang for your buck out of your controller, meaning how much can we get out of them? So when it comes down to it, uh, the pixel controllers that you know have been around in this hobby and in the world of pixels for a long time, uh, there have been two types. Right, the first type that came are the local type controllers, whether it be a Falcon F4, F16, something from Advitech or a SAN devices. Um, these controllers offer local ports, which allow you to, uh, you know, basically bring this close to your props and then run short cables from the controller to each prop. Now, the problem you run into with this type of controller is if you need to make the data go more than like 25 feet, you can start to have some issues. Um, there are ways to cheat the system. There are ways to, you know, to, to try to finagle to make it work. Um, also, among that 25 feet, you're going to have power loss as well. Um, voltage drops. And depending on how many pixels you have on the other end of that 25 foot cable um, determines whether you need to add in power injection or not. Okay. Now, there are also the newer type of controllers um, are the long range type controllers. Okay, I first ran into these with the stage lighting company Entech, and then of course there's the Falcon F48 and the newer Culp controllers in uh, this the world of Christmas lighting that offer that ability to be able to uh, get that control. So the question then is, um, and the Culps are, are a hybrid type controller, which I like the best, is super cool. Um, so the question is, how many, I know this is almost turning into a what controller should I buy video, but ultimately that influences how many pixels to run on each port. So if you look at it financially, let's look at the financial first, okay? Say you've got a Falcon controller and, or, or a Culp or something like that, you can run 800 pixels off that port. Maybe the number's higher, maybe it's lower, but let's say you could run a maximum of 800 pixels off of that ports okay and maybe your cost um actually let me just pull this up here i know i don't i'm not recording the screen right now but we'll go to to pixelcontroller.com to falcon controllers here and um and go to a uh, f16 controller and i will put it up on the screen here for you guys later and from an F16 for 200 bucks, we have 16 ports on it, okay? So 200 divided by 16 means that we're paying 1250 a port, basically, if we just have the standard uh, F16 controller. And so <clears throat> what that then looks like is you tell yourself, okay, you know, if I'm going to go use power injection, um, over adding another port. And again, this is relative. It needs to be within the context of your display. But if you say, okay, I'm going to get an F8 power distro and 
instead of using a another controller, whether that be a Falcon F4 or an F16 or whatever, but it's say it's another F16, it's 1250 per output. Uh, so that means, you know, an F8 power distro from Falcon will do eight outputs of five amps each um, for power distribution. It's not going to do data, but it, but for power injection, we add that in. We add in some power T's at, you know, two bucks a piece. Um, and we say, OK, if we want to power inject, you know, we'd still need the same power supplies either way, um, whether we're adding another controller or power injecting. So the difference in cost when we look at it financially, when we look at running, um, say, 600 pixels instead of 300 or 300 instead of 150, the, the difference um, financially between running those on a power injection board versus adding a new pixel controller is basically the cost of the power injection board. And it's going to come in cheaper almost every time to do it that way, right? Because a Falcon F8 or a similar power injection board are generally around 10 to $15. Um, the power injection tees, maybe there's eight of those by, you know, and so that's two bucks a piece. Uh, but you're still looking at, you know, eight ports. So say it's $2 a port, if it was 16 bucks with shipping or whatever, it's two bucks a port for just power injection plus a $2 power tee. Um, everything else you would use in the other setup, so the power supply, the extension cables, everything else would be used if you had a controller there. Um, the different, another controller, the difference just being okay. You know, that's the difference. So if you want to add, if you're looking at it from a purely financial basis, it's always going to be cheaper to add power injection to go, okay, I am going to use, you know, like a Falcon F16 here is 1,024 pixels in six per string in 16 string mode, okay? Um, and so what that looks like is, you know, instead of going without power injection and going 150 pixels at 50% at 12 volts or maybe uh, 300 pixels at like 20% at 12 volts, instead of going that far, I now can double that number uh, with power injection. And yeah, it's going to be cheaper right, than adding another controller. But there's two problems with this. Um, and, and I'm not against power injection. Don't get me wrong, okay? The first is if you have a bad pixel, say you're coming out of this port, you've got 800 pixels, and pixel number three goes bad, okay? Until you fix that pixel, the rest of that line of maybe it's 1,024 pixels. So 1,021 of those pixels in your show are now out until you fix that that's probably going to be noticeable to most people watching your show. Okay. Now, if you buy good pixels from good quality vendors, you burn them in for a while. You just let them run uh, before you put them up on your house. You know, some people run them for a couple hours, some for a couple days. I'm in the couple hours camp, but it really can't hurt to run them longer. See if any of them drop dead, replace them. Uh -huh. and, and ultimately, even if you just run them for a couple hours, your chance, if you buy from a trusted vendor, from somebody who's staying on top of their factory, making sure quality is good, your chance of having bad pixels today in 2021 is not that high. It's just not as common as it used to be. Um, and that's great. You know, most bad pixels are from the factory are just a bad solder joint. And so it's all about quality control there, right? It's all about instead of, you know, pumping it out the quickest you can, it's like, okay, no, quality right? So that factor is more or less removed. What isn't though is, okay, inside of your connections between various props, if water gets in there, um, if you get a bad connection, uh, you know, and things start flickering, if your data between any two pixels is gets too long over 25 feet, I generally say, uh, you can begin to have flickering and issues. Um, if any of those things happen, it's going to affect everything further down the line okay and that stuff can still happen right so um ultimately you know that's the reliability side to think of if you power inject it often and well, that was this side actually it is generally going to be cheaper okay but on the other hand um every pixel down the line from wherever the pixel was bad or the flickering came in some moisture got into your connectors every pixel down the line is now affected by that okay so what i like to recommend to people when we talk about pixels on ports 
is I like to use smart receivers to the best of my ability and use a lot of smart receivers. Why am I so bullish? Why do I get so excited about smart receivers? Um, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I'll put a picture up here. The Falcon smart receiver gives you the best of both worlds, whether you use a Falcon board or a Culp controller board, um, doesn't matter. Because you can now come out of an F48 or a Culp. So on an F48, if you use every port, you can do like 340 some pixels per port. On a Culp, it's 800, I believe, at 40, and I think 1600 at 20 frames a second. Um, and so you can run a lot of pixels off a port, okay? And say you go in without power injection, and you go to smart receiver A, okay, and you run, and this is how these, these receiver boards work. You basically have smart receiver A. It's got ports 1, 2, 3, and 4 on it, okay? That's the first, say, 150 pixels off of that port is smart receiver A, okay? Then you go to smart receiver B. You set it that way on the receiver, and you chain them in that, that order. And now smart receiver B is pixel 151 to 300 on ports 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's basically port 1B. Then port 1C becomes um, the uh, becomes the third set. So it becomes 451 to, or whatever, 301 to 450, something like that. Who knows? Um, so anyways, and so you get the ability to have the best of both worlds. Because ultimately, if something goes bad with pixel one on port 1A, it's not going to affect port uh, B1 or, or C1, okay? Um, any issues that you have are not going to, to mess with it, but you still, on your main controller, on the processing on your Falcon or your Culp controller, you still are using all of the processing that's on board. You're not wasting pixels by not power injecting, okay? And then the benefit of this is that when you're setting up your show, whether it's yourself, whether it's with uh, friends, neighbors, whoever wants to help, um, it becomes a lot less complicated to set up the show. Because now when you're telling someone to plug something in or helping them do so, you just say, hey, come out of this plug on this controller box, right? That's labeled whatever, 23, and go to those couple snowflakes, right? And there's no like, okay, we're going to go to these and then there's this different box and we have to use a T and then we insert it here and it adds the power. Like that's a whole lot more complicated, not just for myself to remember, but also for whoever I have setting up. Is it going to be a little more expensive? It is, but not as much as you may think because a smart receiver is only 22 bucks. Okay. And you know, the, the, the the power injection board is like 16 bucks right and the difference between the two of course is sure the power board can do twice as many ports right it's got eight outputs instead of four for for 15 bucks we're saying 16 to make the math easy um but ultimately um you know i think it's the best of both worlds to use a lot of smart receivers to use them heavily because ultimately what i value and maybe you value this as well is the ability to basically sleep well at night knowing, okay, like I don't have to constantly check up on my show knowing that if something goes bad, if a pixel goes out, something goes wrong, a smart receiver box, you know, the power supply dies or gets wet or something, which has never happened to me, but it could. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, 1,024 pixels for each port or 800 pixels for each port being out because that's a lot. Instead, they're smaller numbers. And ultimately, that's going to make your display more reliable and your life less stressful when you're putting it up. I hope you've enjoyed my take on this topic. How many pixels should you run from each port on your controller? Obviously, everybody's got their opinions and their methods here. These are just my own. Um, but if you do like what we're dishing out here, be sure to check us out here, subscribe, and go grab my free guide to begin with Christmas lighting. The three things you really need to know before you buy anything in Christmas lighting. Then we'll see you guys over on this channel next week and on LearnChristmasLighting.com. Have a great day and Merry Christmas.